The S-CAM brake is a heavy-duty system which enables large vehicles to operate efficiently and safely. Transportation departments check the condition of truck and tractor trailer brakes at way stations across the U.S. to monitor brake maintenance. This is important because weather and other factors affect operation often during a haul. At 55 miles per hour, vehicles are traveling 80 feet per second. The driver and other motorists on the road are at great risk if the heavy-duty brakes on these vehicles are not in top shape. So, as with other automotive components, the efficiency and safety of brakes and brake linings are directly related to proper care and maintenance. This video program will show you how to replace parts vital to maintaining a safe brake system. How to prepare, inspect, and reassemble brakes on trucks and trailers all the while educating you on the preferred methods of checking parts for wear and tear. The brake linings on this trailer were measured and found to be near the minimum safety standards. We'll begin brake maintenance on this trailer with the brake inspection. To prepare the brakes for inspection, raise the vehicle using jack stands under the axles. The spring brakes are then caged that is, the manual release mechanism on the brakes is set in the release position. On this particular wheel, we have a leaking hubcap, so at reassembly, we will install a new hubcap. Next, remove the wheels. Now, for the brake inspection. Inspect the brake shoes for wear. Notice the condition of the brake lining. Pay close attention to its wear pattern. The wear pattern will match that of the brake drum. Inspect the worn linings. Are the bottom shoe linings thinner or more worn out than the top shoe linings? This indicates the camshaft or camshaft bushings are worn out and need to be replaced. Midland Heavy Duty Systems recommends the bushings be replaced at each brake reline. Check to see if the wear of the lining at the center of the brake shoes is level. Here is an example of a brake shoe run with a bent spider. Notice the thickness difference in the lining. Next, check the drums. Look for broken drums, deep heat cracks, deep grooves, and rounded corners at the back or front of the brake face. When brake drums exhibit these signs, they should be turned or replaced. Please note, however, that brake drums should be turned or thoroughly cleaned at every brake relining. After servicing the drums, remove the brake shoes. Recheck the camshaft and camshaft bushings. Don't make a replacement decision on the basis of a manual test. You can't gauge 42,000's clearance by hand. We recommend replacing the camshaft bushing every time you reline a brake. Remember that 42,000th clearance in the bushing or camshaft equals about one inch of pushrod travel. Replacing the camshaft bushing is an important step that will help you stay within Department of Transportation specifications. Also note the condition of the cam head. If it is not smooth, replace the entire camshaft. Using a proper go-no-go -go gauge, check the anchor pins and their bushings for wear. Worn brake spider anchor pin holes and worn anchor pin bushings can cause unnecessary noise problems and should be replaced. Change the anchor pin and bushing as a unit. Don't replace the anchor pin alone. Next, check the S-CAM for spline wear. Excessive spline wear between the camshaft and the slack adjuster will rob the system of pushrod travel. The slack adjuster plays an important role in the cam brake system. It enables the mechanic to maintain proper brake chamber pushrod stroke and to adjust the lining to drum clearance. During inspection, check the slack adjuster screw and locking collar. Also check the clevis bushing in the slack adjuster. An egg-shaped wear pattern can mean excessive travel and unwanted noise. Make sure all slack adjusters in a tandem are the same length. Do this by measuring from the center of the camshaft to the center of the clevis pinhole. Brake chambers come next on the inspection list. They convert air pressure energy into mechanical force. 
Therefore, all brake chambers must be of the same size. It is also important to notice whether the chambers contain weak or broken springs. The spring should be able to return the camshaft to the release position. Each brake chamber has a diaphragm, which moves the push plate and rod assembly forward. Check the diaphragm for air leaks. We have determined this chamber will have to be replaced. Never attempt to service the spring brake side. Replace the entire unit. Finally, inspect the axle spindle. Pay close attention to the wheel oil seal surface. Clean the surface and remove any burrs or rust. Seal any deep nicks that appear. That completes our SCAM brake inspection. It's time now to replace those parts which show wear. When replacing the linings, first decide on which type of lining to use. Answers to several questions make this an easy task. Specifically, what kind of carrier is the user? Common carrier? Concrete truck? Where does the truck operate? The flatlands? Perhaps the mountains? This trailer carries a full load, up to 20,000 pounds per axle. It travels mostly on freeways, making long hauls, and makes stops at high speeds. So the Greyrock GRS 2015 lining should be used for this vehicle. 2015 meets motor vehicle safety standard number 121 for 20,000 pound axle loads. Midland Heavy Duty Systems has several compounds in the Greyrock line. Let's take a quick look at some more of these carefully formulated brake linings. Each has been designed to perform under different working conditions. Greyrock GRM 2040 is a metallic compound and is MVSS 121 certified for 25,000 pound axle loads. It works well under severe conditions such as frequent stops, heavy loads, and on severe downhill grades. Greyrock GRP 2030 is an asbestos-free compound. It is MVSS 121 certified for 25,000 pound axle loads. It has a higher coefficient of friction than GRM 2040 and works well under severe conditions and where high brake temperatures occur. Greyrock GRG 2020, another asbestos-free compound, is MVSS 121 certified for 23,000 pound axle loads. It will give long life with minimal drum wear under severe conditions and high braking temperatures. Another asbestos-free compound is Greyrock GRB 2014. It is formulated to work well with normal service for axle loads up to 20,000 pounds. Other compounds available in the Greyrock line are formulated for specific brake types. Now the brakes on this vehicle can be trusted to operate efficiently and safely with the correct brake linings. Follow these procedures for cam brake reassembly with the appropriate replacement parts. Install the camshaft bushings and seals in the brake spider using a suitable tool. Make sure all parts and retainers are carefully aligned and tightened. Install the camshaft into the axle bushings. Once the S-cam is in place, prepare to install a double diaphragm spring brake, which Midland calls a go brake. First, cage the spring brake. Now, set the maximum adjustable stroke. Consult your Midland Troubleshooter's Guide for the proper travel. This Type 30 chamber requires a 2-inch maximum adjustable stroke. Mark the push rod at the chamber housing. Pull out the 2-inch travel and lock with vice grips. Install the new Midland Go Brake in its bracket. We have checked and determined that this brake system will require a 90 degree maximum adjustable stroke for the slack adjuster. Using a square, position the clevis and mark the rod to be cut. Now install the slack adjuster. Next, prepare the shoes for installation. When using regular brake shoes, use a go-no-go -no -go gauge to see if the anchor pinhole allows for proper shoe alignment. We are using quick change brake shoes for this trailer. No matter which type shoe, use a brake shoe stretch gauge to see if the shoe has been stretched. A stretched shoe will not have the proper shoe arc and will not allow for an acceptable clearance between the shoe and the drum. If the stretch gauge is not available, 
place the reline shoe in the new drum, making full contact at the center of the shoe, showing 8 to 10 thousandths of an inch clearance at the cam and anchor ends. Once the brake shoes fit correctly, install them on the spider using all new brake springs. Brake springs hold the brake shoes in position on the camshaft head. These springs are heated and stretched at each brake application, so eventually they lose their strength. Weak brake springs can cause noise problems, shorten lining life, and cause an imbalance in the braking effort across the axle and within the tandem. So use only new brake springs. Next, fit the brakes with new brake shoe rollers. Imperfections in rollers in this area cause unwanted noise. When installing the brake rollers, lubricate the area where the rollers contact the brake shoe, but never put grease on the roller surface that contacts the S-cam head. Next, check for proper alignment to identify a bent spider. With shoe assembly completed, use the adjusting screw on the slack adjuster to rotate the camshaft to where the rollers are sitting on the lowest point on the cam head. This puts the brakes in their released position. Before installing the wheel and drum assembly, check the wheel bearings. Clean and inspect them. Also lubricate the bearings with a light coat of oil. Next, install Midland's barrier wheel oil seal. Apply a light coat of oil to the inside of the oil seal. And then apply a light coat of oil to the outside of the seal. Install the new oil seal. Be sure to check the oil seal after installation to ensure proper seating. Next, install the tire and drum assembly. Use a good wheel dolly to allow the wheel hub to align correctly with the axle. Proper alignment prevents damage to the oil seal. Then install the outer bearing and axle nut. Next, adjust the wheel bearing to manufacturer's specifications. Install the lock ring and jam nut. Remove the filler plug from the hub cap. In the event of reusing the old hub cap, check the vent hole in the filler plug to be sure that it is open. Now install the new hub cap with gasket. Fill the hub with oil to the correct level. Then rotate the wheel slowly and recheck the oil level before installing the plug. Finally, recheck the hub for oil leaks. Now adjust the brake linings to full contact with the drums. Back the brake adjustment off until the lining clears the drums. Maintaining this proper lining adjustment will keep the customer on the road and running for the life of the parts. That takes care of our S-CAM brake reassembly. The S-CAM brake is an efficient and safe brake system for some of the heaviest vehicles on the road today. Knowing how to troubleshoot, replace components, and rebuild the system will make you an invaluable asset to the people who drive today's big rigs. Midland Heavy Duty Systems manufactures a complete line of parts for the S-CAM brake and maintains a technical training team with diagnostic equipment to help you train your personnel and maintain balanced, safe brake systems. Midland Heavy Duty Systems wants to be your vital needs single source supplier. Give us a call for any parts or assistance you may need.